Hey, this is Ken Finn at Capital Advantage Tutoring, and it's my job to get you to pass the SIE and all the FINRA exams, Series 7 Top Off, Series 6. But right now, I'm trying to create a series where I'm going through the book, the SIE book first, because that's where most people seem to have a trouble, and they're beginning. So I am going through the book, chapter by chapter, unit by unit, as a go-along, as a ride-along to you buying the book. If you're interested in the book that I'm looking at, go in my description, and there should be a link there for the book, not Achievable, the other one. Achievable is great, but the other one is a different book. So this chapter is going to be about politics. It's to read the book. What I'm doing is I'm giving you an, what do you want to call it? A primer or something that will help you get through the book. Okay, so up to chapter four, introduction, introduction to debt instruments. So basic buying characteristics. First of all, so a bond is a contract between an issuer and an investor. So a bond is when you as an investor, you, Joe, Mary, Mike, Bobby, lend money to an issuer like a company, like a broker, like a bank or a firm or a state or a city or a country. That is, a, And what happens is they're going to repay you. So what they pay you every year to do this is called debt service. So my example is you lend me money. You lend me $1,000. I'm going to give you back the thousand dollars in 30 years. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay you a hundred bucks a year every year until I pay you back. So that's your interest. That 10 bucks or that hundred dollars is your interest. And it's a hundred dollars out of a thousand is 10%. So if you buy a 10% bond, you're getting a hundred bucks a year and then you get your money back. If you buy a 5% bond, you're getting 50 bucks a year, 7%, 70 bucks a year. That never changes. Remember that for later chapters that it never changes. So the debt service is the amount of money I'm paying you every year. Now, in reality, bonds pay every six months. So if you have a 10% bond paying a hundred bucks a year, you're paying 50 bucks. You're getting paid 50 bucks every six months, usually on the first or the 15th of the month. That's the way they are. Now, so that's how an issuer can raise money by borrowing it instead of giving up equity and preferred in common like we did in the other chapters, this is borrowing the money. I borrow the money from you. What happens is you are considered not an owner, but a creditor. So I owe you the money. You're a little higher on the food chain as far as, um, as far as getting paid when we have money, but you don't get to vote or anything. So you don't have as much power, but you have more power in a way that if I go bankrupt or I'm in trouble, you get paid first, then equity may get nothing. Okay. So, Par value is always the thousand. It's really where it's issued. It's the principal or face value. Par value is a thousand on a bond. On a preferred, it's a hundred. On common, it's a dollar. But we're talking about bonds right now. So bonds are, are born at par. They are traded at a thousand dollars. That's it. Now the coupon we just talked about, the coupon is the set rate. It's a stated rate where it's a stated rate. What that's what we're paying you. So if you buy a 5% bond, it's paying 50 bucks a year per bond, per $1,000 bond. That Remember, once that's set, it never changes. Keep that in mind. Once it's set, it never changes. Okay, good. Now, Okay, now, think of risk-reward. So if you have a bond that's five years, so if I was going to borrow money from you, five years versus 30 years, right? So if I was going to borrow money for five years, I would pay you a certain number. That's my wife. If I was going to pay you, if I'm going to borrow the money for 20 or 30 years, then I'd have to pay you more money. So the longer term bonds have a higher coupon, so this is more risk for you because I'm holding your money for a longer time, time value, inflation, all that. So I have to reward you for that by giving you a bigger coupon. Okay, so that is coupon. So now when they issue a bond, it's usually a coupon and it's a fixed rate. But what they can do is they can give a fixed rate that once it's 5%, 4%, 8%, whatever it is, it is. And the later chapters go deeper. I just want, we're giving introduction. Now, bonds can actually have a variable rate where say you issue 5%, you're going to get 50 bucks a year. What happens is sometimes they have other ones where it may be it's a variable rate where as rates go up or down, your bond goes up or down also. So if you have a 5% bond and rates in the economy are 5%, we're good. But if rates go to 7 or 8%, then your bond also changes to 7 or 8%. Mm -hmm. So it adjusts. So what it does is it makes it more attractive, okay? Because this way, 
as rates go up, you're going up with it, you're earning alongside it. So you're not being you're not being inversely impacted by a rising coupon, a rising rate. Because usually if you have a 5% bond that pays 50 bucks a year, that's not changing. So what happens is if rates go to seven or eight or nine percent, your bond's still paying five, but everyone else is getting seven or eight. So your bond looks like shit because it's paying less. So a variable, if it goes to seven, you go to seven. If it goes to four, you go to four. So that's where that's attractive. But to be fair, since they're giving you that feature that's a better feature than just having a fixed coupon, your initial coupon is going to be lower, okay? So that's what's going to happen. It's always about risk reward. The less risk, the less reward, more risk, more reward. So long-term bonds have higher coupon, more risk to you. Short-term bonds have lower coupons because it's lower risk. We also have another part of this is the credit rating. So the credit rating is what the company, how credit worthy they are. The higher the credit rating, AAA, AA, A, even triple B, their investment grade, so they have low coupons, lesser risk. AAA has the lowest coupon. But once you get below triple B to double B and lower, it's speculative. And their coupon has to go higher and higher because we have to, the company has to entice you to take the risk of investing in their bond. Okay. Now, the first payment is always going to be the, it, basically bonds pay on the first or 15th. That's just a thing. Okay. Now, um, sometimes it will move differently because they need to like, so if they first, when they first issue the bond, maybe they didn't issue it exactly on a six month thing. So they're going to give you what they do is they're going to give you a different coupon. Say it's January and July. Okay. Say it's a January and July bond and they don't actually issue it till March. Well, if they pay you in July, they're only going to give you three months. So what they do is what they call a long coupon where they actually pay you in January for nine months from March all the way to January. That's called a long coupon. Okay. So now another thing is called accrued interest. So accrued interest, I know this is boring, but we're just going to get through it. So accrued interest is look, if you buy a bond and it pays every January and July, that means during that time, you've been earning interest. You just get paid at the end. So what happens, and you don't have to do the math on this exam, the seven top off and the six top off maybe. But in this one, you just have to understand the concept of accrued interest. So every day that you own the bond, you're earning interest. So let's think it's a 10% bond. Say you divide the 10, 100 bucks a year by 360. That means that's 27 cents a day. So every day that you own a 10% bond, you're earning 27 cents. Now, why did I say 360? Because a corporate or a muni, they use a 360 day year where treasuries use an actual year. So I'm assuming corporate, if I get a 10% bond paying hundred bucks a year, divided by 360 days in a year, that's 27 cents a day. So for every day that you own the bond after the payment date, you're accruing interest. That's your interest. And whoever buys the bond from you gets the entire amount, the entire 50 bucks in July, but it's not his or hers. So they, when they buy the bond from you, they have to pay the accrued interest. So they're going to buy the bond from you and then add the interest that you've accrued since, since the last payment and add that to your payment. That's accrued interest. Now, bonds that don't accrue interest are zero coupons. So zero coupon bonds it's kind of like if you borrowed money from a friend and you said, hey, listen, give me 20 bucks. I'll give you 25 bucks, 25 in a week or two. That's a zero coupon. So it, so basically a zero coupon is you buy it at a price like say seven or 800 and at maturity, you get the thousand dollars. So if it's a short term, like a T-bill or something like that or commercial paper, you buy it at like $980 and you get back a thousand at the end. So you make 20 bucks. That's your interest. You get nothing during the life of it. So zero coupons are not for income. Remember that zero coupons are not for income. They're at a discount. Now, all bonds have a maturity date. So if I borrow money from you, I have a maturity date. So a maturity date is the date it pays you back your money. It's set. If you buy an 8% 2038 bond, that means it's paying you 80 bucks a year until 2038. And then you get your $1,000 back. That's a, like a term bond. So that you may see come up a thing called serial versus term. Serial, well, let's do term. Term is I issue it today and it matures in in 30 years. That's it, okay? That's a term bond. Then we have serial where it's issued one day and then we, we and if you have the book, you can go with it. It issues on, say, today. Say it's April 1st. And then in 2020, what a great year. 
um, maybe in 2030, 10% of the bonds mature. And then in 2031, another 10%. In 2034, so they have one issue date and multiple maturity dates. So most GOs are issued in serial format where you're getting one issue date and multiple maturity dates. So most of those bonds have to be quoted at yield to maturity, not price or yield. Because how can you compare your 12% bond, 12-year bond to an 18-year bond, other than using yield to maturity? Because yield to maturity is the yield that you're earning if you hold it to maturity. That's the way that goes. Okay. So now, why do bonds fluctuate from par? Well, we talked about it a little bit. You buy a 5% bond at a th for 1000 bucks. If interest rates are to 7 yours doesn't look as good anymore because it's still paying 5 So the price will drop because it's less attractive. But the other way, and it becomes a discount bond. Another one is if you have a 5% bond and rates drop to three, yours is looking really freaking good. So people will pay more for that because it's paying 50 bucks a year when all the new bonds are only paying 30 bucks a year. So it's going to be better. So if rates drop, your bond price goes up. If rates go up, your bond price goes down. Now, I don't know if they talk about it in this chapter, but understand something that if you have a long-term bond, its price is going to be more volatile than a short-term bond. Just remember that. Long and low, baby. That's what I tell everyone. Long-term bonds move more than short-term bonds with interest rate risk. And then if you have a two bonds, one's a lower coupon than the other, the lower coupon will move more. And we will go into that if you join my uh, if you join my live. Okay. So if you join my live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can see I will you can ask that question and we'll talk about it. Okay. So discount bond if rates go up, premium bond if rates go down, because it's already been issued and the rates move. Interest rate risk is the risk that if rates go up, the bond price goes down. It's that easy. Long-term bonds have the most, low coupon have the most, and then if you have two bonds that are one priced over another, the lower price will go. We talked about credit risk already, that it's basically, that's when the credit rating eight credit ratings and Moody's and S&P rate the bond, and they give it a triple A, double A, A. But if it's Moody's, it looks a little different. Like S&P goes big A, big A, big A, like triple A. Moody's does big A to little A's. So to continue my conversation on this beautiful sunny day, we just talked about credit ratings. So part of the credit rating stuff is that the credit ratings by Moody's and S&P are a little different. They're pretty much the same, but they're a little different. So if you have a top level company, that would be triple A. On Moody's, it would be A to a little A's. And on S&P, it would be two or three big A's. But let's drop down to like triple B. On S&P, it would be three big B's. On Moody's, it would be one big B and two little A's. They're the same thing. Triple B and BAA are the same. So I hope that helps a little bit. And then to get below investment grade, anything below triple B or BAA, both of those are the same thing. Anything below that, like BB or BA, are considered speculative and a little riskier. And they have a lot more problems. Like they, um, they're they harder to sell because they're lower. And a lot of institutions can't buy stock that's not investment grade. So that's where that goes. Now, some other things in there. So we have call provisions. So when you buy a bond and interest rates drop, obviously the, inv the issuer doesn't want to keep paying that higher rate. So usually built into the bond is a call provision where they can buy it back. Okay, so what they can do is they can say, listen, we're going to have a schedule and we're going to say, if we buy the bond back in 10 years, we're going to buy it back at 105. If we buy it back in 15 years, we're going to buy it back at like 102. So that's the way that goes is that the longer you hold it, the lower the call price, call premium. The call premium is the amount above par the call premium is the amount above par that they are going to call the bond from you. So they'll, they'll pay for you. So if I said 105, that leads into another question of how are bonds priced? So what happens is bonds are priced, if they're term bonds, which are one issue, one maturity date, they're priced as percentage of par. So percentage of par is, so if you buy a bond at 99, that's 99% of par, par is 1,000, 99 instead of 1,000 is 990, and that's really complicated, but it's much easier. Just remember, 99 means 990. 102 is 102%, which is really 1,020. If you see 104, that's 1,040. 
Now, another part of this is that corporates and munis are quoted in eighths. So if you see 104 and an eighth, that's 104 and an eighth percent. So you do one over eight divided, one divided by eight, that's 0.125. Then you would do, you would say that would be 0.125. You would add the 104 to that. So you would have 104.125. That'd be 1,041.25. Violet weight. So if you bought a bond for 99 and a quarter, like 99 and a fourth, it'd be 99, one divided by four is 0.25, 99.25, which is 992 and a half. So that's how corporates and munis are quoted in eighths. Now, the reason treasures are different is because they want to screw you. So they're quoted in 30 seconds, not eighths. So if you see 99.25, that's not a quarter. That's 99 and 25, 30 seconds, which is, I think, 0.78. So you would do 25 divided by 32, whatever that is, say it's 0.78, and then add 99 to it. And then that would be 99.78. You do 99.7, Let's do an easier one because I can't do math. Let's say I see 101. 0.04 or dash 04. Now remember, if you see a decimal or a dash, it's always a treasury. Always a treasury. If you see a decimal or a dash, it's always a treasury. So, if you see 101 dash 04, that's going to be 430 seconds. 4 divided by 32 is an eighth. There we go. That's 0.125. So it'll be 104. I think I did 104. Well, 101. I can't, let's go back and do this. 101.04 is going to be 101 and 430 seconds. 40 30 seconds is an eighth, so it's going to be 101.125, which is really 1,011 and 25 cents, because you do 101.25 and then move the decimal one to the right, and that's how you get the price. So if I come up with a number of 98.25, I do move the decimal to the right once, and I have 982.5. I hope that helps a little bit. Also, they have a thing called a put feature. Certain bonds have a put feature, usually the variable rates, which the later chapters cover. Variable rate bonds have rates that float, but they also have a put feature, which means you can sell it back to the issuer anytime you want at par. So then you can't lose, well, other than default, you can't lose money if you buy it at par. So there's no interest rate risk because even if the rates go up and the price goes down, you can still sell it at 1000 and then you're fine. The last thing on here is, I think if I remember on the book, convertibles. Remember, a convertible bond is just a bond that turns into common stock, okay? All it is is a bond that turns into common stock. And like if you buy one, and what you have to know for this exam, for the top off, we'll go over the numbers. But for this one, you just have to know that it converts into common, and there's a set price and a set amount. And the bond price is usually based on the stock price. Because if you have something that turns into something else, say you have a bond that turns into two shares of common, the bond price will always be worth two times what the common is worth, just like economics. So if a bond is trading at 50, if the stock is trading at 50, and you got 40 shares of it, it'll be worth two grand. If you got, if the stock was trading at ten dollars and they got forty shares, the bond would be trading at four hundred. So the bond price on a convertible always be more volatile than regular bonds because it's based on the stock price, not the interest rates as much. So it's going to go up and down. It's like a derivative in a way, based on the common stock. And common stock is very volatile, moves up and down. If you're watching this recently during the Corona thing, you watch the stocks go crazy. All the convertibles are going up and down. The reason I like convertibles are not only do you get the interest every um, every six months, you also get the volatility and the growth of the common stock. Great product. Okay, another part of this is we're done. So if you want more, join my lives on Tuesdays and Thursdays during the crisis and then back to just Tuesdays. Remember, anyone can join. You don't have to be, just be a subscriber and you can come on. You don't have to be a student. It's for anyone to join and I'm trying to tell people. So... Sounds like I said I'm trying to kill people. I'm trying to help people. So just join and we'll go from there. Have a great day.